So Ava is an application for deaf and hard of hearing people to better understand conversations around them. Uh, this can be a multi-person conversation or a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, basically what we do is we connect people's devices, so smartphones, tablets, laptops, anything that carries a microphone to one another and then we can caption uh, all the audio from the conversation and translate it to text. So for the deaf or hard of hearing person, they can then see who is speaking and what's being said by following uh, the transcripts uh, in real time. Ava is awesome to see what people say. With one tap, I invite people and they join me with their phones. In 2013, I, I moved or I went to study uh, as part of my master's degree over uh, in Berkeley. Um, and pretty quickly, I actually got involved in uh, the startup ecosystem there, which was not necessarily my intention, to be honest. I was taking a class, social entrepreneurship, where Thibaut was also in that class. And uh, we both also went to Startup Weekend, and Thibaut pitched then um, the story of his parents and his sister, and the, the fact that he wanted to use technology to solve some of the communication uh, barriers for them. And I was really intrigued by his pitch and his story, and I was like, wow, I'd love to, uh, to embark on this. When you, when you join these accelerators or incubators, um, many of them have uh, a deal for you where basically they, they give you capital and in exchange for um, equity or like a stake in, in the company. And so in this case, we uh, indeed got an investment of like $15,000, I believe, um, plus the housing and the space. Um, and then we had to sort of give away equity for that. And so relatively speaking, if you then look at how much money you raise in, in later rounds of the company, you give in the very early early beginning, in the early stages, you give a lot, you give away a lot of equity for, for the money you actually get for it, the cash. And so, but at the time, I would say that, you know, we just came out of, out of school, we just came out of the university, and we had nothing. So for us, it was really important to have that little bit of capital. Yeah, we, so we raised $43,000. Um, it was actually a, a really good thing for us to do because one, it was a way to test if there was really this need that we thought there was and if people were ready to pay for it. And so our, our crowdfunding campaign was a lot of pre-sales. And um, so people were essentially buying either a beta version of the product or the actual product for maybe a year or a lifetime um, subscription. And it allowed us to take that and go to our investors and say like, hey, you know, people are ready to pay for it. We raised this much money just based on pre-sales. And so that was a really good proof point. So when you're um, first time founders and you're still a lot young and you, you don't have a lot of, you know, connections and um, roots here in the Silicon Valley, it may be difficult to actually get in touch and sort of get a hang of like how it works when raising VC money. Um, so it took us a while, like it took us about six months before we raised like th that amount of money. Um, but once you understand how it works, then it's actually not that difficult. As, and it's also the case that once you sort of get your foot in the door and start talking to enough parties and enough people, they start connecting you. It's really a matter of like, can you become the hot girl in the room, right? So are you able to put yourself in a position and have people speak and talk about you among them, themselves and each other um, where you are now becoming like this hot startup that everyone wants to invest in. In the very beginning, we got a only no's. So we talked to so many investors before we actually started to get traction and to get them to put money in. But once we had figured it out, within three weeks, we were completely oversubscribed. So we ended up saying no to a lot of money. Um, just because they all started to look at each other and be like, hey, this is an interesting one. Expenses are very high. So like if you want to have an office in, in San Francisco uh, for yourself, you're going to pay a premium. And I think one of the nice things about the space here, Runway, is that 
there's a very good vibe of startups around you and interaction with founders and other startups. So it's an open co-working space where everyone is always you know, collaborating but also meeting up over happy hours or breakfast or things. And so like, you can easily ask questions or help one another. And I think that's one of the, the great perks about being in this co-working space. There's so much capital here that you can, you can really rapidly raise and grow your company. Um, and then one other thing I think is really interesting is that you, you have a lot of these you know, startup uh, literature, like the books, like the, 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 you know, the, the Lean Startup and all those pretty famous startup literature. Um, the people who write those books, they walk around in the Silicon Valley. Right, so beyond capital, um, the people who have done, you know, serial uh, have run serial like companies successfully, um, they're here as well, and so they become your mentors or they become your advisors um, or even investors, and so I think that's a huge advantage as well because you have this sort of culture of reinvesting. So like the people who get a, like say, you know, you have some startup and they get acquired by Facebook or Google or you know, one of the big companies, and now these people have a lot of capital. They they reinvest in the Silicon Valley and in companies. They become angel investors. And so there's this constant like um, cycle of giving back that's happening, which is extremely favorable for young founders and entrepreneurs. If we're trying to recruit people um, and we're competing with Google and Facebook and all these big companies, their offers, their salaries are two or three times as high as what we can offer to developers, for example. And so it becomes much harder to actually recruit talent, right? Because all the talent's being recruited by the big companies. Um, and the expenses of like your office space or like any, any expenses you have here are through the roof. They're extremely like high. And so those are things that make it a lot harder and maybe reasons to not come to the, to the Silicon Valley and, and start a business here. Thing. So if you come over here as a Dutch founder or entrepreneur and you want to raise capital in the Silicon Valley, you very clearly need to have an anchor point. You have to have um, either a very clear idea of how you're going to develop your business in the Silicon Valley or beyond, so in the United States, and open up an office, or you should already have some anchor point. And if you don't have that, it's going to be very difficult for you to raise money here because they don't typically just give you a bunch of money and you go back to the Netherlands and start using your money there, right? Like that's not how it works. Like as Dutch uh, entrepreneurs uh, and, and just in general, I think we, we're, we forget to, to really make things look a little bigger than they are. And so if you look at Silicon Valley and, and the, at, like the culture of th that money, that all the capital that's out here and the way that VCs are investing in companies, you have to kind of oversell yourself. It's like fake it until you make it, right? That, that sort of mindset, is, it really applies here because if I want to raise money from VCs, I need to be the next billion dollar company. I need to be the next Facebook or WhatsApp. And I think that is something that typically Dutch founders don't really have that mindset. You know, they come in and they'll be like, they have amazing products and amazing innovation and technology, but they are so realistic about it and so like, yeah, you know, slow steps or they think too small basically. And it's really like, think big and that's gonna help you so much to raise capital here. Yeah.